Hello everyone and welcome to the very first product demonstration video by thepilotreport.com. My name is Len and today I'm going to be sharing with you the AeroWeather iPhone application. Now we'll get started by showing a couple of features of the application and then jump into an actual video demonstration of the app. Now the AeroWeather application gives you weather for various airports you select. Your airport selection options are from a worldwide airport directory, by entering in the ICAO code, or you can use the nearest airport option which is location based according to your, air, your phone GPS chip. It gives you METARs and TAFs which I must tell you is reference only, meaning this weather application is not an approved FAA weather source, so this is for reference only. It will deliver to you raw or undecoded information, whichever you desire. It supports both U.S. and metric units. And best of all, the price is free. Why don't we go ahead and jump into the video demonstration. All right, let's go ahead and start the application. So I'm going to click on Arrow Weather. It'll open up. Now I have my settings on Arrow Weather so that when this application first opens, all the, ladded, all the uh, data loads up, showing you all the current METARs and TAFs. So here's your basic um, here's your basic dashboard. It's got whatever airports you set as uh, you know quote unquote your favorite will show up here, and um, I've got it set currently to decode the uh, dashboard results so that I have an immediate um, readout of what's going on here. So go over the few f uh, functions of the application. If you click on the edit button, it'll allow you to either delete by pressing on the um, the red, the red circle, or on the right hand side if you want to reorganize just uh, click on the hatch mark and drag and drop into the position that you want. Uh, so you know I'll go ahead and I'm done editing there. Um, we'll uh, show you how to add an airport. You come over and you click the plus sign and it's going to bring you up your list here to type in uh, your ICAO code or search by nearest location. I'll show you how location works the top left corner here you'll click on the bullseye mark and it's going out there and it's checking your location and it's coming back and it's giving me the airports closest to my location here so if I wanted to add one of these to my favorites like uh, let's go ahead and add Worcester Regional now that added Worcester to my favorites and there it is at the bottom and since uh, since I just added that airport if I want to get the actual weather from there I'm going to hit in the bottom left hand corner this arrow, this circular arrow, and that's going to go out and refresh and bring me back the, import, the airport information, the weather information for the Worcester Regional Airport. Um, the other option obviously if you wanted to add an airport is to type it in. So uh, if I wanted to put in San Francisco KSFO, there it is in the list, then you go ahead and just click on it again with your finger and it adds it to the bottom of your list. Now in the bottom right hand corner is some of the options of the application, some of the setup features. So uh, like I said, I've got mine so that the data loads on startup. I prefer that so that as soon as the application loads, it goes out to the internet, grabs the information and brings it back to me. Um, your options for the overview list are either to give you raw information or decoded. Now the overview list is like that main dashboard, your favorites page. So if you want the information raw, right up front then you can choose raw and like I mentioned I have mine decoded um, so that I can just have the quick information and not have to think too hard. So the next one here is format and there's some options here show local times, show civil twilight, show remarks, flight rules uh, if you're in the US operating in the US you want the NOAA otherwise you might select ICAO if you're somewhere else in the world and uh, wind direction options you can either choose off to or from now going back to the main settings page, there is a units button. Now this units has the option to show the original station units. So if you have an airport that's out of country or you don't really care what the Fahrenheit is, you can leave that to the on position and it will give you everything that you need. I've got it turned off again, set up for um, my wind in knots. You've got the options here, meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles per hour. Your temperature, you have uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. And um, next you can tell what do you want your altitude to read out in feet or meters. Going back, we've got uh, visibility in um, miles or meters. I've selected miles. 
your pressure in hectopascals or inches of mercury also millimeters of mercury so in the states here we use inches of mercury your coordinate options and your distance whether you want to use nautical miles kilometers or miles so those are some of the settings for the application now going back to the dashboard let's go ahead and pick one of these airports in fact why don't we just use the example we picked San Francisco so in order to get the information for San Francisco I'm going to click the refresh button information is going to pull up and there it is telling me currently that the wind is 280 degrees at 20 knots gusting to 28 57 degrees Fahrenheit under VFR conditions plain and simple now if you actually click on the airport itself the airport information from the dashboard you're going to get this expanded screen here now the expanded screen is really nice again it gives you the airport information tells you uh, its location and state, the local time, the UTC time, what the uh, sunrise and sunset times are, and then there's uh, the METAR and the TAF. Now at the bottom you do have the option to either show a raw METAR and TAF or decoded. Now if I click decoded it's going to break it down for you in long form all read out so you don't have to do any of the thinking. Or if there's something on there that's confusing you some of the remarks sometimes are a little far-fetched. Just go ahead and hit the decoded button and it will give you a clear readout of what you're looking at. Uh, switch back to RAW here for this example. So uh, we've got the METAR information followed by the TAF. Um, it's got the local information and when it was issued and the date just like you would normally see elsewhere. If you scroll down you've got station information, uh, you've got latitude and longitude, your variation, your elevation, your time zone, and information regarding daylight savings time or daylight standards time. Now if you want to view the airport location you can go ahead and click on show on Google Map and it will remain within the application and pull it up in the map for you give you an idea of what's going on. Now at the bottom don't be fooled here this is, says satellite but this does not mean satellite weather it just simply means a satellite map of the airport. Going back, scroll back down to station information. Uh, there's an option for nearby, um, nearby stations, which will give you the airports in the vicinity of San Francisco. So if you click on that, it'll pull up a list for you, giving you the other airports in the vicinity. So if you wanted to know what's going on at Alameda Naval Air Station, you can uh, click on that and it adds it to your dashboard. So you'd actually have to navigate all the way out to the main screen in order to view that. But it does give you the airports from around the area. Um, the last thing it does give you are two options to view the airport details through airnav.com or navmonster.com. So for uh, this example, we'll wrap it up by clicking on airnav.com and seeing where it takes us out to get to uh, the airport information. And here it comes. We're going to get the airnav.com airport information. If you've never been to airnav, it's another resource where you can get information about airports and uh, runway, uh, you know, airport information, runways, whether or not uh, it's got control tower information like that. So that sums it up for the demonstration. Let's jump back to the presentation. For those of you who might be watching this video outside of our website or anyone interested in more information about this product, visit thepilotreport.com forward slash aeroweather. Now I want you to know that there's no relationship between this product and myself. It's just something that I've downloaded and I've been using and this is my personal review. So on that note, I want to thank you for viewing this video. It's been a real pleasure making it. Please check us out for more additional aviation product reviews and demonstrations. This is Len with thepilotreport.com wishing you clear skies and calm winds. Take care.